it's that time of the week again. Welcome to the wallet and your weekly dose of financial knowledge. Today I'm sharing one of the talks from our Money Matters Festival a few months ago. Sometimes we can get caught in the rat race. But in this talk, Stephanie Sword Williams challenges conventional notions of success and fulfillment and might have you reevaluating what you want out of life. Our festival and this recap series is made possible thanks to a handful of amazing sponsors who have supported Vespot to bring financial education to women year in, year out. Our headline sponsors are Women on the Move, which is J.P. Morgan Chase's initiative to fuel the ambition of women and advance financial equity. And Pension B, which is incredibly passionate about helping women build pension confidence so that they can enjoy a happy retirement, as well as eradicating the gender pension gap once and for all. You may have also spotted ads for the festival in the Financial Times, our media partner and one of the world's leading news organizations. The FT offers fearless thinking in defining moments. Its impartial analysis of global business, political and financial stories equips you to make decisions with confidence. We hosted the festival at Coco, an iconic London venue featuring live music, electronic nights, art exhibitions, and a dynamic cultural calendar of events within its private members club, the House of Coco. You can find more information about our sponsors and their amazing missions on our Money Matters 2024 landing page. The link is in the show notes of this episode. Remember that we are not certified financial advisors. Information shared in this podcast is for educational purposes only and does not constitute financial advice. I don't want to be a millionaire. I don't want to be a homeowner. And I don't think that I want to be a mother. And the reason I'm sharing that with you today is because I want you to remember that what you value and what I value can be completely different things. And actually, that's more than okay. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm bored of trying to live out society's expectations. It's exhausting. And as America Ferreira said in her Barbie speech, even when we're trying to do everything all at once, it never feels like we're actually doing enough. I used to think climbing the career ladder was successful. I used to think earning more, making more, doing more was the thing that I valued. It was the key to my success. But then I realized that I actually didn't make up this myself. This was a mindset that was placed on me. These were someone else's beliefs. Actually, the thing that I value the most is freedom. Like many people, I really bought into the rat race, thinking that I needed to do what everybody else was doing in order to be happy. But when I thought about what I had to sacrifice to live up to society's expectations, I started to question whether any of it was what I even wanted in the first place. My sister has been a huge inspiration to this mindset reshift. She left a high paying job in the insurance industry to go work in the mental health industry on an entry level salary. Because she realized her version of wealth was time. Now this decision changed her entire life trajectory and her future plans. And when I asked her do you ever worry about falling behind? Is this something you ever worry about? She said, I feel the exact opposite. She said, when I was working in insurance, I was always living for the future. I tell myself that everything would be okay when I get to this point. But even when she reached those points, she still wasn't happy. So when she made the decision to let go of society's expectations and the future milestones that they had placed on her, she said, what actually happens is you start to live every day as it comes. 
Rather than thinking that your happiness can only be reached when you hit a certain criteria, she said that you realize happiness is possible in the present moment. You actually free up more of your mind because you're no longer persevering with this future vision of yourself that you may not have even wanted. You free up yourself to live in the moment and to really enjoy all of those little things that make up what we call life. It sounds cliche to say, but she did say to me that the journey really is more enjoyable than the end point. Now, she did also remind me that when you choose to go down a different path, people don't always like it. They struggle with that. In fact, they may even call you crazy and mad like they called my sister. But if being true to yourself and what you value is crazy and mad, well, guess what? I'm happy to take those labels. The reason I'm sharing all of this with you today is because you have the right to invest in what's important to you. Other people's discomfort is not your problem and it should not be your priority. And you shouldn't feel shamed into making decisions to please other people. You need to make the right decisions for yourself. Last year, when my landlord came knocking on my door to say I had to leave the apartment because they wanted to increase my rent, I decided to use that as a sign to live out my Emily in Paris dream. I packed my bags and I moved to Paris instead of saving for a mortgage or looking for a cost-effective way to live. This financial year, I'm not going to make as much money as I made last year. And although I know some people may look at that and think that that's a regression, I look at last year as one of the happiest years of my life. And at Christmas, when my three best friends called me to say they were all pregnant at the same time, I didn't go into doubt or fear or worry that I was being left behind. I felt nothing but genuine joy and excitement for their next chapter. And I can share all of this because I regularly spend time evaluating what is important to me. And I do this by reflecting on three questions that I want you all to reflect on. What brings me joy? What makes sense of my life ambitions? And what would I regret not doing? These questions help me to stay true to myself. They help me make decisions and stay on track with those decisions. And they help me to block out the noise of what I'm meant to be doing. Now, I know these questions can feel intimidating and they can feel daunting, especially if you can't think of the answer straight away. So if you need to reframe them, I'd encourage you to answer these questions. What doesn't currently bring you joy in your life? What's holding you back from living the life that you want to live? And what do I already regret not doing? Because let's face it, it's easier to pick out the flaws and faults in life than it is to plan for the future sometimes. And the reason I ask you to consider regret in particular is because I meet so many women in their later life who tell me they wish they hadn't wasted time on things that weren't important to them. One of my favorite authors is Daniel Pink, and he wrote the book, The Power of Regrets. And in that book, he believes that we should stop saying, hashtag no regrets. Instead, we should look at our regrets as the blueprint to our futures. After years of studying regrets, one of the biggest regrets people have is boldness regret. Wishing they'd have spoken up, done more, and lived more boldly. And I don't ever want you to have boldness regret. These questions that I've shared with you today have helped me reframe my thinking. So instead of telling myself I need to do more or I should earn more, I've started saying to myself, if this is the only thing I do, I am so proud. 
And instead of telling myself that I can't do something and making up excuses of why it won't work, I have started to action things I've been wanting to action for a long time. And instead of following what everyone else is doing, I'm actually starting to carve out a direction for me that doesn't require anybody else to be involved. I want you to keep coming back to the question, what do I value the most? Even if that means going against the grain, what do I value the most? And if it ends up being that buying designer handbags because a mortgage seems far less feasible right now, is what you want to value, you do that. Or if you want to spend 50 pounds a month on development books because that's your version of growth, then you enjoy that. Or if just getting to the end of the week and buy an expensive bottle of wine doesn't break your bank, well, just enjoy that. And if you decide that having listened to everything today, the values that you've been measuring aren't currently serving you, it's also okay to change things. It is never too late to change things. It shouldn't matter how much time you've put in already. What matters is what does your happiness look like if you stay in the current situation? I want you to avoid looking back in years to come and saying, is this it? So what I hope you take away from my speech today is that there is no right or wrong. You can write your own rules and you don't have to settle with what's expected of you. Spend time reflecting on these questions. Don't let other people tell you what to value and have the confidence and the courage to define what you value in life. Thank you. Now, if you've ever been to my sessions before, you know one that I just spoke very slowly. <laughs> I'm a fast speaker and I usually love to pace around the room, but my tips and advice that I had was to take time with that speech. But what I also love to do is make sure that when I share this advice, you also think about how you can implement what I've just shared with you. So I want everybody to take out of their notepads, get your pens, and I want you to reflect on those questions. What brings me joy? What's going to get me closer to my life ambitions? And what will I look back and regret? if I don't do that thing. And I'm just gonna give you the next few minutes to answer these. And if you can't think of anything, don't worry. Just spend some time thinking about it. And I'd love you to do this at the end of today as well, because it's really gonna help you think about what it is you really value. Yes, what brings me joy? What's going to help my life ambitions? And what will I regret not doing? Now, does anybody have the courage to share what brings them joy? Yeah, we've got one person straight away. Wow, I thought I was going to have to start picking on people. Um, planning how I'm going to get there, um, which is quite contradictory because I actually do finance coaching and I'm, a, and I'm an accountant so you'd think I'd plan everything but <laughs> do as I say not as I do I guess um and um yeah less focus on money and more focus on impact I feel like it's really hard to sort of cross that really thin line you know you could be making x amount of money but then are you really impacting are those are those people that you coach going to return to you are those people that you know you file their accounts are they going to come back have you done anything to impact their life in any way, shape or form. And what will I regret not doing? Um, spending time with my son. He's a baby. Um, he probably doesn't care at the moment, but <laughs> um, I, I sort of need to um, focus on what brings me joy and what's going to help my life ambitions to make sure that I can actually do that. And also putting myself out there. Um, 
I'm not somebody that will record like a YouTube video, for example, and be like, okay, this is what I do. So I actually, while you were speaking, um, I actually messaged somebody to, you know, see what their rates are for their studio to start recording YouTube videos. Um, so yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Love that. Thank you. Does anybody else want to share? I'll stand up. I'll be brave. Um, so what brings me joy, talking to people, making content, um, a good gym session and building up other women. Um, I think what gets me closer to my life ambitions is networking, meeting inspiring people um, and continuing to utilise those connections um, to kind of further other people and myself. Um, and yeah, what would I regret not doing? I think taking a moment to reevaluate if I'm where I want to be um, and just staying on a treadmill because it's what everyone else is doing. Thank you for sharing that. That's amazing. <laughs> is there anybody else that would like to share? It's a very safe space and everybody seems very supportive and welcoming. One final person. Yeah, the front. Thank you. So thank you for sharing, and I only have um, time to write up my answer for the first question. So I think um, joy is about the little moments in life. And sometimes even having the sunshine in London especially brings me so much joy. And also being surrounded by nature and just going for a walk in the park also brings me joy. And I think because humans are fundamentally social animals, so I feel like making social connections and connecting with people also brings me a lot of joy. And beyond that, I'm super passionate about female empowerment and also positivity emanation. So I feel like whenever, like, because I'm a very optimistic, energetic person, and sometimes even um, my friends telling me that your positivity really, you know, inspires me and really motivates me and really lightens up my day. That also brings me a lot of joy. Yeah. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm going to wrap up because I'm pretty sure I'm going to get a time sign in a second. But I hope everything I shared just now was something that is going to help you go away and think about what it is exactly that you value, that is important to you. But also just to remember that you do have the power to invest in what you want to and you can make those decisions for yourself. So please don't get swept up in social comparison and online envy and all those things that we as humans very easily can. It's not always true. And actually, when you get to those points, you can look back and realize that it, it wasn't for you anyway. So spend the time reflecting and please enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you so much. Did you enjoy this episode from Money Matters Festival? Make sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast platform so you don't miss the next episode. You can also check out our upcoming bootcamps on vespod.com.